Hi, I'm Ann Mahaffey and I'm an applications engineer working on web tools here at Analog Devices. And in this video, I'm going to talk about ADCs that have circuitry in place to reduce the kickback. So um, these are ADCs where this assumption that we make that the, the, this node is discharged to ground before the next acquisition, um, we've got some ADCs where that uh, assumption is not, is not accurate. Now this is a good model for assuming a worst case scenario for any SAR ADC, but um, if you're troubleshooting at the bench or you're trying to understand how to squeeze the most performance out of your ADC, it's helpful to understand that some of the ADCs don't work this way. Um, so reviewing what we've talked about in previous videos, we spent a lot of time talking about this kickback and we've derived this formula um, for what the amplitude of this kick is. And so for these ADCs, um, there's, there's some that have a, a circuit here that instead of discharging to ground, it is driving that node or it's trying to drive that node to the voltage that was on this node when the switch opened. So when it entered conversion, um, there's a voltage on this node, which, which at the time would have been, um, you know, so the switch closes, whatever voltage is being driven here is also eventually going to settle here. Um, and so when the switch opens, um, the, the, the acquisition, or I'm sorry, the conversion takes place and this, this, this voltage changes, but then there is a circuit that tries to drive this node back to the voltage it was at when the switch opened. Um, so when conversion started. And so, and the, the, the goal of this circuitry is to try to minimize the voltage difference between what's being driven here and what's here when the switch closes. When the switch closes is when this kick happens. And so the circuitry is trying to, instead of discharging to ground where you could have a, a pretty large voltage difference, um, it's, it's trying to minimize what that voltage difference is. Um, and so another thing to understand is even though the circuitry is trying to drive the circuit to, um, to that voltage when the switch opened, there is a certain amount of error that, that occurs in this circuit. So it's never going to be perfect and there will be an error on this voltage as well. Um, so to come up with a formula for how we would describe this, um, I'm going to say, so instead of assuming that the, that the node is discharged to ground, let's come up with a different way to describe what this voltage is um, that drives the kickback. And so let's just call it VC. And so VC is going to be the difference between the voltage that's being driven here by the um, this, this circuitry and then the difference between that and what the voltage is when the switch closes again on this node. So just bear with me and hopefully this will make more sense in a minute. All right, so basically we've got a voltage that's the difference between what's here and what's being driven here at the point when, when the switch closes. Um, and so this right here is essentially what's that difference between uh, what the voltage was at open versus when it closes. And then we've also got this error term. Um, so this, this, this uh, VC is going to be dependent on the input signal, the, the signal that, that you're driving into the circuit, which is different than the way that we modeled it when you're discharging to ground. Um, so if we think about our input signal in terms of a couple different cases, all right, so if we think about things in terms of DC, uh, which in this case is kind of a best case scenario, so for DC, when that's, as these switches are opening and closing, this, this voltage coming in is constant. So that means that the voltage when the switch opens and the voltage when the switch closes will be equal. So this delta V is gonna be zero. And so the only voltage that we have to worry about settling is this error term. And for these ADCs that have this, this circuitry in place, the error term can be 10 millivolts to 100 millivolts. Um, that's just a rough number, but just to give you an idea of um, what we're talking about. So that is much, much smaller 
than if you had to settle the entire reference voltage um, for the cases where where the this node is discharged to ground. And that's that's the whole point of this circuit is that you know say for a DC or a low frequency um, input signal that you have a very small amount of voltage difference between these nodes to settle. Um, so this is our best case. Um, our worst case, if you had a maxed input. Um, so the voltage could change dramatically from the time when the switch opens to when the switch closes again. Um, so it could swing from, you know, zero volts all the way up to full scale. So in this case, you're, you're, it, you have a potential to have a, a voltage difference of a VREF. It could be that big. So we need to make that assumption that your, um, this delta could be VREF. And then in this case, VREF is so large compared to the error that we can just ignore it. And so this is our worst case. And this is identical to what we've discussed previously. So, you know, if we assume that this node discharges to ground. So in this case, for a muxed case, you don't really get, uh, there isn't really much benefit of this circuit. It's not really, um, you know, doing anything helpful. Whereas here it's, it's, it's um, providing a lot of value as far as kickback settling. So now you've got a scenario where, um, you know, somewhere in between best case and worst case, which would be an AC signal. So here you've got to worry about both the delta V and the V error. And it's really just a matter of which one is bigger. So for, for low frequency inputs, it's going to be the error that's going to dominate your kickback. But as your frequency gets higher, the, the voltage change from uh, when the switch opens to when it closes is going to get greater and greater. So we need to come up with a term for this delta V in the case of an AC signal. And so how we do that is we think about our AC signal it's a sine wave. And what we want to know is how much is this sine wave changing from the time when the switch opens to the time when it closes. So from, so when the switch opens, the voltage on both nodes, you know, at the point before it opens, the voltage on both of these nodes will be equal. We're going to call it V open. And then when the switch closes again, this node right here is going to have moved on. Um, it's going to be, be further along in the sinusoid. And this node is going to have this V open minus V error on it. And that's what's going to cause that kickback. So, so we've got these two voltages uh, at, at different points on our sine wave. And this right here is our delta V. And so then we've also got this delta T, which, um, so this is how we can come up with the delta V that we need is we know that, that a max, the maximum slew rate for a sine wave is, so slew rate delta V over delta T is two pi F times the peak voltage times this delta T. Or I'm, I'm sorry, the so delta T is over here. So this is the, the slew rate, 2 pi F uh, VP. And this delta T, we know the value of that because it's the time between when the switch opens to when the switch closes. So the time that the switch is open is the conversion time of the ADC. So we know, we know that value. And we've, we've discussed that in previous videos, so if you need to review, uh, but this delta T is basically the conversion time of the ADC. So we can rearrange this so that the delta V, and then the delta T is all right. So for our AC case, this is what we use for delta V. And then we've got the V error. And again, it's just a matter of what is the frequency of this AC signal. 
the, the larger um, this frequency is, the larger this delta V is going to be, and the more it might dominate um, this overall equation. And so what this means, if you're looking at this on the bench, um, if you're actually looking at this um, circuit put together, what you'll see is you might have a kickback that, that settles really easily for DC. You might be able to reduce the bandwidth of this RC filter and, and, and you know, and in that case, you can reduce the noise coming in. Um, for a MUX case, you would have to widen the bandwidth out because your kickback is going to be a lot bigger. And then for AC cases, it's going to be dependent on uh, the, the frequency or the, the bandwidth of your signal coming in. Um, so this just helps you to understand how you can optimize the circuit a little bit further than what an ADC that just discharges to ground, um, you know, what you, what you can get away with with these types of ADCs. There is a, a, an article written on the same topic. It's called Front End Amplifier and RC Filter Design for a Precision SAR. It's written by Alan Walsh. It's in the December 2012 Analog Dialogue. Um, and so that's just another, if you want to just, just look at, it's the same topic, but in an article form. And so if you want to review that, it might, might help to make sense of this topic.